House Republicans delivered articles of impeachment to the Senate Tuesday against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Mayorkas is the first presidential cabinet member to face possible impeachment in nearly 150 years. Republican lawmakers have criticized the secretary's handling of the ongoing migrant crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border. Mayorkas' job is not in danger from the Republican effort, but that is not as true for the Republican leader of the House. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane reports. For the second time in eight months, House Republicans are talking about removing their own speaker. Yeah, I asked him to resign. Kentucky Congressman Thomas Massey became the second House Republican to say he'd support dumping Speaker Mike Johnson. I am not resigning, and it is, um, it is, in my view, an absurd notion. But he wouldn't say when they'd move against Johnson. The Louisiana Republican, second in line of succession to the presidency, surprisingly elevated to the job after last year's ouster of Kevin McCarthy, pushed back. When we are simply here trying to do our jobs. Johnson is balancing the narrowest U.S. House majority and is under scrutiny for his newly released plan to provide billions in aid to Israel and to Ukraine, but separately, which might satisfy his hardline critics who want to cut off Ukrainian aid, but also risks delays and derailments of an aid package for both war zones. Hear ye, hear ye. Meanwhile, Johnson's House Republicans are trying to remove a different official delivering impeachment articles to the Senate today against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Is impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors. Arguing he's willfully and systematically refused to enforce immigration laws, an allegation Mayorkas denied again today. I have abided by the law each and every step of the way. Setting up a formal proceeding tomorrow in the U.S. Senate, destined for a dead end. What are the prospects there's actually going to be an impeachment trial tomorrow? Uh, I'd say... Uh, Virtually none. Democrats control the Senate, and senators expect the matter will be quickly shut down without a trial. It's a bogus uh, action by the House. That's the problem. And Scott joins us now from Capitol Hill. Uh, Scott, what can we expect once this trial begins? It could take hours. It could eclipse an entire afternoon, John. We know it begins locally in Washington, D.C. at 1 p.m. tomorrow with the Senate taking up the matter. The senators are all sworn in as jurors. There is a presiding officer, the Senate President Pro Tem. That's Patty Murray, a veteran senator from Washington. She's a Democrat. There's no Supreme Court justice here because this is not an impeachment of a U.S. president. But beyond that, there's every expectation from both parties this is going to be disposed of, dispatched by the Democratic-controlled U.S. Senate. It's just a measure of how much time will be spent, and Republicans may try to employ some negotiation here to extend the time frame a bit because they want to exact some political pain on the Democrats running for re-election this year, John, in otherwise red states. Ohio, Montana, can they exert some pain on those Senate Democrats on the issue of the border to make it more challenging for them to win re-election? But they all have to sit there without their digital devices, right? So that means that they are going to, I mean, that's incentive enough to get this thing over with because they won't be able to gain information, right? They can't take their devices in with them. Is that right? All other proceedings in the U.S. Senate stop. Yeah. And Democrats with whom I spoke today say we have urgent business to tend to. We can't spend time, muscle, and space on this endeavor. The but Republicans are arguing this is the second time in U.S. history, a cabinet secretary has been impeached. And that Democrats in the Senate owe it to the impeachment managers and to the U.S. House to at least hear the evidence, hear the arguments, hear a case, and give this time. But the expectation is this is going to be an efficient process yeah. that ends with the dismissal of the case. The House Speaker says he plans to put that uh, uh, effort to fund Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan, all in separate uh, bills. What are the, what are the, how are the Democrats going to respond, and what are you looking for when he tries to do that? People seem open-minded about it in my interviews today, John. This looks, smells, and tastes very much like the Senate bill that was already passed with 70 senators, a bipartisan group on board. Billions of dollars for Ukraine, billions of dollars for Israel, billions of dollars for Taiwan. The House is separating it a la carte, like a five-star restaurant. We have to buy each piece individually. Um, that gives his hardline Republicans some wiggle room to not support Ukraine, which they don't want to do, but to back Israel and the other components. That last one there, that's tricky. 
Other priorities, including the forced sale of TikTok and the seizure of Russian assets, that becomes one of those Christmas trees, John, where everybody puts an ornament on top of it, <laughs> tries to add their own prerogative. That can get messy real quick. But things do look, for now, optimistic to the House Speaker on the other components. Mm -hmm. Then quickly, Scott, give us me, uh, your sense of how this foreign aid package might affect Johnson's speakership, the future well, of it. It's, in, it's endangered. The Republicans who've moved against him include Marjorie Taylor Greene from Georgia. John, she has drawn her red line on Ukraine funding. So he's going to have to thread that needle to survive her challenge. I talked to her this afternoon. She says still no time frame for when she pulled the trigger politically on that effort. Scott McFarlane on Capitol Hill. Thank you, Scott.